so I assume all of you were, were part of the orientation program. This, from what I have understood, how the Lord is leading us is a continuation of that into a deeper understanding. So the Lord asked me to explain these the principles in a simple manner. And we will be covering them through scriptures. But I leave it to you to ask questions and find out scriptures by yourself. And if you don't know where they are, then ask me. Yes? So, we know that in the orientation program, I spoke about the fall of man. Then what? The flood of Noah. Then after that, the Tower of Babylon, then Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah? Put it that way, yes? Yeah. Understood. That these are the things that are still affecting us now. Now, imagine this race car is the original sin. You understand what I mean by original sin in Genesis 3, yes? Now, and imagine this is what happened in Genesis 6 with the watchers. Now, we don't pay much attention to this because we are not taught about this, not church. But that is not the case with the people who wrote down the New Testament. That is not the case with Jesus. That is not the case with Peter, with Jude, even with Paul. Even though Paul focused on sin. Peter and Jude focused on Genesis chapter 6. And we must understand this. And this is going to be an intro to that. Is that clear? And so I want you to well, have your Bibles with you. So before we continue, this is Jesus. He's the light of the world. See the light? Yes? Do you understand? Yes? So he came and provided a solution for the sin. We all understand that. And the church has been preaching that solution from the beginning till now. But what we don't understand is that this light of the world, Jesus, also came as a solution to Genesis chapter 6. The problem that happened which is still affecting us because this has been taken care of. But he's coming again to take care of this. But we are more focused on this when we should be understanding this because the end day's deception is going to be concerning this. Whereas this Already Jesus said it is finished. The process is sanctification. Yes. He died to reconcile us with our Father. But this has nothing to do with the, that reconciliation. The watches that came down and the things that are going to happen, mark of the beast and the whatever, has nothing to do with our reconciliation with God, that is inward. Do you understand? That's a sin inward, the flesh that is being taken care of by whom? By Jesus. And that's why we must have the light of the Lord in our heart. Am I clear so far? Yes? But this what we is what we fail to understand because it is not being taught, but it is plain and evident in the scripture. And today, we're just going to briefly cover 
this. Yes, for that, we start with Galatians 3. Can you go to Galatians 3.19? Yeah. If you don't have your phone, that, 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 that's okay. Just leave it. Oh, you, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. It's okay, no? If I leave the yes. light running, okay, okay. Okay. Galatians 3.19. Can you, can you cut someone, read, receive. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a medium. Yes. So when you read that, you think this transgression has to do with Israelites. But it's talking about multiple transgressions. And if you look at how things happened before the law of Moses, God didn't, you wouldn't say care, but you wouldn't have overlooked all the sin. But from the moment the law was there, the Lord said, if you touch a mountain the wrong way, you will die. If you carry the harp the wrong way, you will die. In other words, if you look at him the wrong way, he will die. Do, 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 do you understand? Aren't you glad you're under grace? Yes? But, do you understand? But what purpose then does the law serve? I'll give you an example to make you understand. In the 50s, that's the 1950s and 60s, when the American military started mingling with demons that they call your force they started a an office basically where aliens can sit on one side humans can sit on one on another side this is real yes do you understand <coughs> so i'm just telling you in my words so what happened was among the humans, there were some Christians. And they said, wait a minute, this is not good. These people are not who they seem to be, who they claim to be. And it went on. And you know what their solution was? Finally, they said, we ought to go to the president and establish the law of Moses back so that these things don't have a right anymore to our people. So they understood what the law was for. Now, do you understand? Here it says, what purpose does the law serve? Yes, it is a tutor to bring us to Christ Jesus. All that is there. Remember? But there is also... The transgressions, plural. That is in Genesis 6, when you find that the watches came down. They didn't fly down like supermen. They came down in crafts. We call them UFOs and whatever. Do you understand? Yes. But that is not today's topic. Yes. So that is the transgression that caused the flood. But it says also after that. And ever since the flood, mankind has been trying to get that knowledge back. Because that knowledge is more advanced than what we have now. For example, if you take Mohenja Taro, um, that is now, right now in Pakistan, there's an evidence of nuclear weapons being used, I don't know, 4,000 years before Christ. I don't know. Do you, do you understand? And the whole of Hindu mythology is full of vimanas, flying machines. 
In fact, the temples are shaped like those flying machines. So we got to ask questions about the reality of what is going on. The reality of what the Bible says to what is going on. You understand what I'm saying, yes? So what purpose does the law serve? It was added because of transgression till the seed should come who the promise was made. And it was appointed through the angels by the hand of a mediator. In other words, the law kept you human. I'll talk more about this. But it made sure that your DNA doesn't change. Do you understand? That's why it was so strict until Christ came. In Christ, you are a new creation. Do you understand? Yes? So can you read Galatians 3.20? You just read 3.19. You just read 3.19. Can you read Galatians 3.20? No mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. That's all. It says, yes? Do you understand what that means? Yes or no? Yes. What does that mean? Mediator does, mediator does not mediate only for one person. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. For all. Yes. For all. What it means is that for the mediator to exist, there must be two parties. Otherwise, what's the need for a mediator if there's only one party? But God is one. Yes? I'll read it from the Amplified. Yeah? Now a go-between, go that is an intermediary, has to do with and implies that more than one party, there can be no mediator with just one person. It implies more than one person. Yet, God is one only one person, and he was the sole party in giving that promise to Abraham. But the law was a contract between two, God and Israel. Yes? And its validity, and its validity was dependent on both. In other words, the law kept Israel human, and God made sure of that. So this transgressions can include our sin, yes. But it's not, when you read it, it's not just that or that. It's not talking about that, yes? Do you understand? You have to understand the Bible for what it is and not for the, not for any understanding that you may have of what it should do. Because in, because I already told you that in Romans 14, 8, 14, those who are led by the Holy Spirit are the sons. sons of God. But what does it say in Galatians 3, 26? We were all sons of God through faith in Christ. Ah, so then which one is true? Do you understand? So it's for you to understand. First, you must have faith. Then you must be led by the Spirit based on that faith. You understand what I'm saying, yes? So God is one. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. But here, what I want you to know is that don't understand the Bible for what you think it says. Understand for what it really says. Am I clear on that? Yes? And that way, even why we get baptized is not really understood. Because everybody says this part. But actually, it involves this part also. And nobody's taught us that baptism involves Genesis 6 and the watches and the solution to that in Jesus. Do you understand? Yes? Now, we understand from Galatians 3, 4, what, what does it say? 3, 24, 3, 24. 
Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Yes. So the law was there as a tutor, but the purpose of the law, what law was given, what? It was added because of transgressions. Do you wonder why God gave such strict rules and orders? Don't mingle with them. If you see them, kill them. The mothers, the babies, the animals, the donkeys, the cats, whatever. Now, do you understand? Yes, because of whose transgressions? Not Israel's transgressions, but the transgressions of the sons of God who came down in Genesis 6. And the law was to keep them safe whom Israel until by faith you become a new creation in Jesus Christ. Am I clear? Yes? Yes? So this then gives us a new dimension of understanding. Remember earlier I was talking about baptism and I'll be teaching you more for this, but this is what I want you to see for now and I want you to meditate on this. Yes? Now, can you go to 1 Peter 3.18? Greet 18 to 22. 1 Peter 3, 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, <clears throat> by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of the Lord, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us, namely baptism, not the removal of the film of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience to a conscience, conscience to a God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Continue, verse 22. Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. That's right. <clears throat> there are people who don't understand this passage simply because they don't understand Genesis 6. If you go to a seminary that teaches you that the sons of God are the godly line of camels, for example. Yes, I'm just making a joke, yes? But do you understand, yes? Then you, you will never understand. Here you have Christ, you have the spirits in prison, yes? Who are the spirits in prison? Who are the spirits in Tartarus? The watches. Not humans. Jesus is telling them, Hey, you crucified me, but I'm going to get out of here. You want to stay here. You didn't win. I won. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And when you get baptized, you're following that model and you're telling people that old nature is gone. You're going down and proclaiming to the spirits, hey, you might have killed me, but I rise again. And I'm a new creation in Christ. That is the baptism that saves through water. That in verse 21 it says, there is also an antitype which saves baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh. Remember? Yes, yes, not that, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. By faith you believe, yes? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he rose again. You come out of water, no? From what I understand, yes, baptism works that way, yes? Yes? Do you understand, yes? 
who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God. Where are you seated? With Christ in heaven, yes? Angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Again comes back to what Paul says in Ephesians 6, the armor of God is. Do you understand? Now there's a lot to expound on this, to teach on this, but I want you to understand there's more than meets the eye, yes? Because this is using something known as a typology. A type. Just like I'm using a type. Obviously, a yellow racing car is not sin, yes? Do you, do you understand? Yes? And I, I don't know what this is, yeah? Yeah, whatever this is, this is not, these are not the angels that came down in Genesis chapter 6. What did you say it was? A pen, okay, okay, whatever, yeah. So, a typology is a, it's like a prophecy, but it's not verbal. And it foreshadows a coming event. Do you understand? Yes? Passover lamb. It's a typology. It's a type of what happens to Jesus. See, the connection is made when you understand that. Jesus was our pan Passover lamb. He's the lamb of God. Yes? So you understand what typology, a type of something, yes? Paul uses that typology when, it, when he's talking about Adam. The first Adam and the second Adam. You understand what I'm saying, yes? yes. Who's the first Adam? Adam, yes. Who's the second Adam? Jesus, yes? Just like that, Peter, instead of using Adam, uses Enoch as a typology. And to understand Enoch, you have to really understand what he read and he understood, him and you. The problem is the book of Enoch is not part of the canon and it should not be, rightly so. I'm not saying it should be. But part of it is quoted by Peter, by Jude, and even in the Gospels, Jesus has spoken about this. I'll go more into that later, but do you understand, yes? So it's like, you know, a wheel, this is a wheel, yes? Did you learn that from the Bible? No, you learned that from your class, yes? That's, this is a wheel, yes? You know this is a wheel, no? You sure, yes? Just like that, biblically, you should know what the Lord has intended. And you must discern what is what. So the book of Enoch, I wouldn't advise you to read it because there's a lot of things that are there. It was not written by Enoch, it was written by theologically sound people before Jesus Christ. But there's something, there are volumes that were written after Jesus Christ also. So you need to discern. Do you understand? Yes? So even in the book of Enoch, for example, there is a book of, there are books describing parables of Enoch. He's talking in parables. Except, I think it's in chapter 70 or 71. Enoch describes another person till chapter 70 as the son of man. And then on one chapter, he says he describes himself as the son of man. And you will not see what all this means. You would think it's a mistake unless you understand that he's talking about the second Adam. The, you understand what I'm saying, yes? He's talking about the second Enoch that is going to come and save you and me. Again, 
with the armies of heaven. Revelation 19 says that. You and I are not that army. Do you understand? I was taught, oh, I'll come in a white horse with them. Clippity, clippity, clack, clack. No. Nonsense. Do you understand? I am not part of that army of which Jesus is the Lord of hosts. I'm part of a different army, but you understand, yes? But he's going to come again, and he's going to come again with the solution for what happened in Genesis 6. Because that is working its way throughout, even now, in Genesis 6. At what point do you cease becoming human? Do you understand? For example, I'm wearing something in my heart. It's a defibrillator or something like that. Basically, if something happens, it supplies electricity, not a pacemaker. So, but you understand, yes? But that is an additional thing. It is not my heart, is it? But the, right now, the technology may not exist to replace that heart exactly. But yes, there are, there are other things that can be replaced. But at what point do I cease to be me once the technology is there and I have a heart replacement, a lung replacement, a stomach replacement, all my muscles are replaced? So then if everything is replaced, then who do I cease to be human? But then, would you not want it to be replaced if it's not functioning properly to extend your life? So these are questions that need to be answered, but you understand what I'm saying? But here's the danger. Human beings are shifting out and becoming more like robots. While Demons, for the better word, or the watchers, who took wives. Why? Because it was had to be. It had to be legal. Are shifting into humanity and forming hybrids and becoming human. So once you take the mark of the beast, you are no longer human. And therefore, Jesus' blood cannot save you. Do you understand? You're not going to be fooled into taking that. You'll know exactly what you do. But uh, here I've shortened it a lot. Yes? Do you, do you understand? Yes? So, this is what the Bible speaks about, and it is what Jesus Christ died on the cross for, and it is what he's coming for again. He died first in his first coming for you and me, to pay the price for sin, for the wages of sin is what? Death. But he's coming again to conquer because you can't mess with them with God and win. You can mess with them, but you can't win that battle. That's why he's coming as a king of what? Kings and the Lord of Lords. That problem is real and it started in Genesis chapter 6. Before that, actually, to understand when the angels came down according to tradition, in Mount Hermon. You understand what I'm saying? That is what Jesus is going to negate. Now do you understand? And that is why we need to get baptized. To show that we don't belong to them, we are a new creation in Christ. Also, the fact that the sin has been forgiven. Jesus is the light of the world, shines in the heart. So to keep it simple, just have to think about him being the light in our heart and focus on that. 
don't worry about the watchers and wearing a watch and watching and praying. Yes, you must watch and pray. Yes, wear a watch and pray. All that is good. But you understand, don't lose simplicity in Christ. This is what happens when you preach these things. People tend to go down that rabbit hole and end up totally lost. And you don't know what to believe anymore. That is why you should never go beyond what is written. And that is safe for us. And we'll have all the answers provided we're willing to look for them in the Bible. Not in the book of Enoch or in whatever books there are. I'm not saying they're not good or anything like that. But you understand, yes? Is that clear? Yes? Any questions on what I have just told you? Do you have any questions? What about you, Jonathan? What about you, Anu? Daniel, you have any questions? Are you sure? Yes, sir. Mm. Yes. For the watchers, when, when, when the second coming was happening, they will be judged. Or is there anything to See, the watchers, the well, question is, will the watchers be judged in second coming? The answer is yes, obviously they are. But the, those, be, those watchers who did that mischief in Genesis 6, are already bound in Tartarus. So we're talking about a new set of bad guys. Now, who that bad guy is, is the deception. We think it's the devil, and we focus on the devil, and there's nothing wrong with thinking it's the devil, and the Bible says we are not unaware. But we must be careful of those who pretend to be the nice guys. Or pretend to be our savior. And that is the anti-Christ, who pretends to be Christ. So, those watchers are gone, for, for, for you to understand. But there are new players who are there battling for our soul, who are trying to migrate into humanity. At the same time, they're trying to get humans to migrate other humanities. Do you understand? So that when Jesus comes back, will he really find faith? Do you understand? Yes? But does that answer your question? Yes. He will judge the watchers, but there's more at play now than we understand. It, um, was there Genesis 6? Maybe it was there, but it's not there in the Bible. We don't know all the details, the hierarchy, but right now, yes, there are more at play. Do you understand? Only thing is, don't get spooky on me, yeah? Do you understand? You clearly understand what is demon, what is demon tech, technology that demons give. Do you understand? Yes? Because none of these things existed 100 years ago, did they? Suddenly, they, they are there. What is next? Do you understand? Now, if I want to come here, what did I ask you to send me? A map. Yes? What if it's already in my mind? All I have to do is access this. And I am able to interface with other device from my brain directly to the internet. That technology is already here. Elon Musk is talking about that, yes? Did you understand? Yes? That's much beyond based on the fallen angel technology and whatnot. Do you understand? But here's the thing. When you go chase after that, where, where will it end? The devil is happy as long as you chase after that, after that and forget Christ. So that's why I'm saying, come back to Christ. 
And if a demon appears, so who cares whether it's an alien or alien or whoever? Yeah? Say, in the name of Jesus, get out. Do you understand? Yes? And you walk by putting away the sin. You don't worry about this. But our struggle is not against what? Flesh and blood. But against principles. Do you understand? Yes? And for that, we have the light of the world who helped us. We are more than conquerors in Christ. We can do all things to Christ who strengthens us. Do you understand? Yes? yes? Keep it simple. Understand who Jesus is. And the rest will follow. Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now do you understand the gospel? This is good news. He came once to set you and me free. He's going to come again. As a king of kings, as a lord of lords. Read Revelation 19. Yes, uh... 1911, yeah, okay. So, yeah. Can you read that, please? Now I saw heaven open, and behold, the right was. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many thorns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Yes. Continue. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Yes. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now all of his mouth was a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself threats the wineness of fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh the name Virgin, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes. Now does this make sense? Yeah? And in verse 20, or verse um, 15, it says, Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that which it he, with with it, he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Them is not us. Them uh, are those people who committed the transgressions. Is that clear? Yes? Any questions? Yes? No? Okay. All right, let's pray.